let's start by stating the obvious on this one. This is not the punishment that people expect to come down from the NCAA for the sign-stealing scandal that is ongoing with how they're going to drop whatever it is they're going to drop, right? We learned on Sunday that Michigan and some of the coaches that are on staff, including Sharon Moore, are looking at perhaps level one uh, violations and infractions. And then when that stuff drops, we'll talk about it. But it, it seems to, again, not really matter to the players themselves because the players have been dealing with controversy at the University of Michigan basically since 2020 when they didn't play Ohio State Michigan for the first time in damn near 100 years. But since that time, all they've done is win. And they've won their way. They, they have won with different coordinators. Josh Gaddis as their offensive coordinator. Sharon Moore as the offensive coordinator. Mike McDonald as defensive coordinator. Jesse Mentor as the defensive coordinator. It seemed to me that the only constant, aside from those players having blinders on when it comes to playing football on the field against other people, is Jim Harbaugh and his entire constitution. He is also another great example of how coaches are the stars in our sport. Coaches are also the mooring in our sport. And if you can infuse your culture into the program successfully, you are probably going to create a winning program because you are a winner. Alabama was infused with Nick Saban. It's a winner, right? Lincoln Riley uh, is infused in Oklahoma SC. You're going to win Heismans. You're going to throw for a bunch of yards. You're going to score a lot of points. You're not really going to care about the defense uh, as much as some others, right? And I say that because all you got to do is look at what USC's defense has been like the last couple of years, giving up 35 points per game, 123rd out of 133 teams. That's not a take. That's a fact. You're also thinking about this from Jim Harbaugh's standpoint. If they wanted to run the ball and be physical on defense, they want to grind people down. He's always been that person. He was that person at Stanford when he had Andrew Luck. And he was that person at Michigan when he had J.J. McCarthy. Nothing has changed about how Jim Harbaugh chooses to coach football, and it is winning football. What it strikes me about this punishment coming down from the NCAA is that it is a four-year show cause penalty for Jim Harbaugh. Okay, They are basing this around a couple of paragraphs that I found um, worth telling. Right, I thought that these were important for us to note, so I'm going to read them verbatim so that you can get a better understanding of what I mean when I say this is just about Jim Harbaugh in the COVID-related recruiting violations that is still kind of coming to an end. Head coaches are presumed responsible for violations that occur within their programs. Due to Harbaugh's personal involvement in the violations and his failure to monitor the staff, he could not rebut the presumption resulting in violation of a head coach responsibility rules, right? Meaning that everything that happens under your roof on your watch is your responsibility whether you knew about it or not. I think that particular bit of language is going to be crucial when we talk about uh, whatever is going to happen with the sign stealing uh, after the NCAA decides to issue whatever punishment it thinks is necessary. It went on in this piece uh, uh, letting us know about Jim Harbaugh's show cause penalty. The panel noted that Harbaugh's intentional disregard for NCAA legislation, unethical conduct, amplified the severity of the case and prompted the panel to classify Harbaugh's case as Level one aggregated with penalties to include a four year show cause order subsumed in the show cause order is a one season suspension for Harbaugh. So first you'd have to show cause why you need Jim Harbaugh to be your head coach. Right. If you wanted to hire him. And that is a very high bar to meet. And that's why the show cause penalty has been so forceful in the past. But this one year suspension would be. If you wanted to hire Jim Harbaugh as a head coach and you met the bar for show cause, you still have to submit to the one-year suspension of Jim Harbaugh as your head coach, which means that you would say if you wanted to hire Jim Harbaugh on a five-year contract, the first year you're paying him, he is not coaching football. Then the next four years, I have the show cause, and then that, uh, that's, that's the contract, right? Uh, or excuse me, the next four years, including the four years. So you don't have one year in that five-year contract where he's kind of not having to do much. But I thought this was also interesting in that they have decided to level this particular uh, piece of legislation at the University of Michigan and not necessarily at Jim Harbaugh. And I say that because they made great, great pains in this uh, release called Michigan Committed NCAA Violations uh, in its football program to, hey, look, uh, we're going to say this uh, at the top. This is about Jim Harbaugh. Uh, uh, this is not a job Jim Harbaugh. This is about Michigan. Uh, the quote goes, 
Harbaugh was not part of this agreement, so his case was was resolved separately, right? Because Jim Harbaugh maintains what he maintains, right? Um, he also is coaching in the NFL, and I thought this is the reason why this is a waste of everybody's time. He won a national championship last year, uh, uh, and he decided to, to take another shot at trying to win the Super Bowl uh, in his family. And I thought it was kind of funny because after winning the national championship, the thing that Jim Harbaugh said that I felt with my whole chest and my whole heart uh, is now that I won a national championship, my dad had won a national championship, my brothers won a Super Bowl, I get to sit at the big boys' table Uh <laughs> on Thanksgiving and I felt that with my whole heart and I, I felt that because my sister is a biosystems engineer my sister makes uh, and oversees the making of prosthetics for um, people that need them my sister is one of the smartest people on this planet that I know my brother-in-law has a PhD from computer science um, he has from time to time worked at the NSA. Like when I sit at the table, I'm the dude that does a talk show uh, about college football. Uh, my dad came out the mud, uh, got on a bus on a Greyhound from Camelton, Florida, get, went to the Air Force, um, and has since become one of the best managers that FedEx ever had. My dad got a circle of, uh, uh, got the Circle Award as one of the better stations in the entire world while he was still just uh, an ops manager. And he's since moved on and done a number of different jobs. My dad's done all this without a college degree. My mother um, my mother has a terminal degree in marriage and family therapy. Um, she worked at DHS in Florida. She worked at Pine Grove in Hattiesburg. She made sure that I met every single professor at the University of Southern Mississippi. And my grandmother is civil rights royalty. Uh, she is the jewel of my family. She is the patron saint. She uh, sued the state of Mississippi for voting rights, and she won. Uh, she was a single woman who owned her own beauty shop in 1960s Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And when I went to go do my last, uh, my, my, my first book, I went down to the wedding registry of Forest County in Mississippi and saw her name next to uh, my granddaddy's name in the colored section of the wedding book. What I'm saying is I understand Jim Harbaugh's need to go to the NFL and to try to win a Super Bowl so that he can measure up to the rest of the stars in his family. But this is kind of the point. Jim Harbaugh is a great football coach, no matter how you want to put this. He is a great football coach, uh, and I think he has an opportunity to, to ascend to the, the upper echelons of coaching uh, across the board, pro or NFL, because if he's able to win a Super Bowl, he'll be able to do something Nick Saban and Bill Belichick couldn't do, win a national championship and a Super Bowl. He'll get up there with guys like Jimmy Johnson and Pete Carroll. But I think the way I want to kind of go at this is, does the NFL care? Because the NFL definitely cared that Jim Tressel was head coach at uh, Ohio State when players were uh, receiving impermissible benefits because they got tattoos um, and sold their gold pants after beating Michigan. And, and I thought, wow, okay. At the time, it wasn't even the NFL that suspended Jim Tressel uh, as an analyst. It was... Uh, the Indianapolis Colts, where he worked, who said he's going to miss six games. Like, for what? For that? He didn't, okay. So knowing that the NFL thought in 2011 the best thing to do with Jim Tressel, a la the impermissional benefits, was to spend him six games, I wonder, if anything, what the NFL is going to do now um, with this recruiting violation story that I think most of us could care less about. We care a little bit more about the sign stealing stuff, but the recruiting violations as they are don't feel like violations to us and to public society, right? I put it kind of where we are with uh, marijuana in this country. It used to be taboo and we don't do it no more. Now it's like legal and used for medicinal purposes and athletes use it uh, for pain relief, kind of like Tylenol. I'll be curious to find out what, if anything, the NFL decides to do. But I'll tell you this, the Chargers are not interested in suspending uh, Jim Harbaugh uh, this year at all. So we're going to wait and see what happens with the sign-stealing stuff. But for now, four-year show cause for Jim Harbaugh, a man who, never, who doesn't expect to coach college football for the foreseeable future and certainly wasn't going to be at Michigan this year to try to lead them to a national championship to... Um, Submit to their one game or one season suspension. Just NCAA, who runs you? <laughs>